fortune awaits in Blood and Plunder. Set sail in the golden age of piracy and claim the riches of the Caribbean at beastsofwar.com. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the reconquest and fight the scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at beastsofwar.com. Hey gang, this is Dallas from Privateer Press and I'm here to talk about painting your models tabletop style. And for this, we're gonna be using a Sea Dog from Privateer Press and we're just gonna do it with some basic techniques. I'm gonna do some base coat, some layering and a little bit of washing and highlighting uh, just to get my guy ready as quick as possible for the tabletop. So let's get cracking. We're gonna start out with a base coat of Midland Flesh. This is just gonna go all over his skin. Go ahead and pull this out. I'm going to need a bit of it here in a little bit anyways. And just barely thin it down just a little bit to loosen up the paint. Not really making it thin, but just loose. And we're just going to get going. We're just going to put some uh, skin tones on this guy. So. Just take our time and paint away on the skin. Starting with the skin because it's kind of that traditional working from the inside out philosophy. Just a nice big area. I'm being a little messy at this stage. Trying to minimize the amount of paint spillover I get. Okay, seems good. With our base coat complete, we can now move on to make a wash for the skin. And for this, I'll be using Baljus Green mixed with Scorn Red and a touch of mixed medium. And I'll be washing it just just a normal wash over top of the surface of the skin, but I'll be using a second brush to control where the wash goes. So on something like the abdomen, I'll let the wash flow everywhere, but somewhere on the face, I want to try to keep it off the forehead and just maybe give it a little tint. So let's make our wash. We're going to make a nice rich brown here. This is actually one of my, one of my favorite colors to work with. You want this definitely on the brown side. So a little more green than red. We're going to put a little touch of our skin tone back into that. Now some mixing medium. I'm going to put a couple drops in here. What mixing medium does is adds translucency. So it's not really thinning the paint, it's just uh, increasing the distance between paint particles. It's just making it translucent. Um, and that way we get a better wash. And it's still pretty sticky. Now to thin it down with some water. So I'll be using a second brush just to control where my wash goes and maybe blend it up a little bit, but I'm not going to get too crazy. So the abdomen, just sort of paint that in there. Torso. The chest. Let's do the neck and face. So right here, I just want to control that wash. See, I'm really thinking about where the wash settles. I like a thin layer for my first wash. If I want, if I want it darker, I can go back and do a second, even more controlled wash. 
and kind of focus in the deepest shadows. But for the most part, I, by taking my second brush, such as here on the shoulder, I can sort of whisk the wash away, let more of that base color shine through. Now, if you wanted to, you could add in some deeper, darker lines by washing in the really fine recesses. So like around the eye sockets and accentuate the brow ridge. I'm just barely touching in a little wash, letting the, letting the flow and the capillary action work. Once again, that second brush is useful for getting rid of any extra that flows out that you don't want. And of course, in between the fingers, I want to make sure it's super dark there. The secret to any good wash, in my opinion, is a great highlight. And for highlighting your skin, we're going to be mixing Midland Flesh with a touch of Rin Flesh. We've already got our middle and flesh out and about on our palette. I'm just going to take a drop of that and add some midland. And this will give us a nice little highlight for the skin. Don't want him too light though. He's a surly pirate. With this being a tabletop miniature, I'm going to focus on what I call the two T's. And that's from here, the top of the forehead, to the chest and across shoulder to shoulder. And that's your first T. And the second T is in your face. All right. So we're going to highlight this guy. I'm just going to really quickly work on our T. The top here. Just do a couple of little lines and dots. On this face and brow, our first T. Maybe a little bit on that forehead. Now the second T. Well, let's get those cheekbones. We got pretty prominent cheekbones. There we go. Now we can move on to the second T, which is the shoulders. And nothing too dramatic here, just a couple of, just a nice layer to define the muscles. Maybe those on the arms. And of course, fingers. Fingers, you want to make sure the fingers stand out because those are very nice looking. Knuckles. I think it looks like he's really gripping it. And if you want, you can come back and work that face just a little bit more. Faces are very important. It's kind of where you look at when you're, it's your natural uh, tendency to look at people's faces and models kind of carry the same way. You tend to look at a model's face first and focus on it. Now we can move on to the next step and I'm going to go ahead and paint his jacket. Um, and for this I need to base coat it in Thamar Black. And I'm going to put a little on the tip of my brush and just barely tap it to my water. That loosens enough to paint with. And mistakes happen. Go ahead and clean that up. And come back and highlight that if you need. And I'm just going to paint this all a solid coat of Thamar Black. Now I'm going to highlight the jacket. And for this, I'm going to mix some Hammerfall Khaki in with the Thamar Black. And some Hammerfall Khaki. Makes a nice 
desaturated black. I'm just going to paint this around the edges of my jacket. Just do a little layer. I want to accentuate the kind of torn and tatteredness of the coat. Just any edge. Some little lines show some motion in the jacket. And we can go ahead and highlight his hair. And for his hair, I'm just going to do like little dots. Just very quickly scatter those across the head, focusing on the hairline toward the face. Let them fade off into the back very quickly. This guy's seen a hard life, so he's gone gray, maybe. He's fought one too many steampunk pirates. Now we're going to add a little Minoth White highlight to that mix and go one step further. And this will be just along the edges to give it that pop. Minoth White highlight. Add it to our mix. We're just going to focus this on the very edges. Just work our way around. Under that hole. Maybe a quick line on these highlight lines. Definitely that collar. Be sure to leave your last color showing. Don't want to cover it up. And the hair, once again, focusing toward the face. Maybe a little bit more down on his sideburns. If you want, grab a little bit more mid white highlight. So we're not doing a shade. Kick up the highlight. Go one step further. Just those very tiny top edges. Not even going down here on the bottom. Just those upper surfaces to catch that glint. This is the T, once again, we're talking about. And just keeping that focus on the upper areas. Maybe a little bit more on the hair. When this guy look kind of old and grizzled. So we've got his jacket and his hair complete. And I'm gonna move on to his sash around his waist. And I wanna pop a color on this guy. I mean, he is a pirate after all. So I'm gonna use a red. And um, for this, I'll be base coating in Sigma Base, shading in Exile Blue, and highlighting in Cato Red Base. So let's start with our Sanguine Base. And we're not gonna use a lot of this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it out of the pot and touch it in the water and drag it out, get a nice tip of my brush, 
and just base coat the cloth. Nice sanguine base color. Don't forget he's got a little showing up front here. All the way around. It's a sash after all. Nice quick coverage here. One of my favorite colors in the paint line. Now shade this, I'll be using XL Blue. Uh, XL Blue or blues make a great shade for your red colors. Now for this, I'm just gonna layer this on. I'm gonna get a little XL Blue on my palette, twist my brush to a point, and just paint it in the folds of the cloth. I'm not going to do a lot, just a little. Make sure I get the underside here. That you kind of want totally blue. And all the undersides folds. Now we can highlight with Cater Red Base. Once again, this is just going to be a layer very quickly on the upper parts of the cloth where the cloth is pitched. And once again, I don't need a lot of this. I'm just going to very quickly paint a thin line for some highlighting. And if you wanted to, you could make this even more pronounced by taking a red glaze of a mix of red ink and water and applying it over the surface and it'll tie it all together and make it smooth those transitions while also making the overall effect more red. And now we can move on to the pants. And for this, I'll be doing it in gray coat gray as a base coat. Once again, I'm going straight out of the pot a little touch of water just to loosen and base coating the pants very quickly giving a bit of that black around the bottom to create a dark line between the pants and the skin Let's keep going. Make sure you get in coverage on all of the parts of the pants. I'm going to try to lay black lines where possible. You can always come back and add a little dark lining to things to make them stand out. I'm going to take some gray code gray and put it in my pot and add a little underbelly blue. We're going to paint some very quick stripes on there on the pants. Pirates got to have stripy pants. And I'm going to keep it tonally similar. And by making some light stripes with a highlight, we can kind of get away with not shading the pants as much. So, very simply, I'm 
Draw a line down the thigh, just following the contour line. And gently widen it. And then go down from the knee. And another. That one can kind of disappear. And the second coat just to make sure. And then add a little underbelly blue. And give it a quick highlight. You can go up to pure underbelly blue if you so felt. Just on the front. For shoes, I'm just gonna do two steps. A layer of bootstrap leather, and then a mix of bootstrap leather and brown ink to shade them. So, we'll take some bootstrap leather. And give his shoes a nice coat of this. I'm going to leave a little bit of that black line between the shoes and the skin. Now we can add a bit of brown ink to our bootstrap leather. This will make a nice shade. And the scabbards and Strap on his arm can be painted along with the shoes. Now I can take a bit of Hammerfall khaki and our bootstrap leather and do a quick line highlight on our leathers. I'm just going to put this right along the edge. Of our knife scabbards. Across the top of the belt. I don't want to focus too much on the shoes. They're not part of my T, but I want a little bit of highlight on them. Just maybe right at the toes. Just right at the front. Just a little layer highlight. Now, I think it's time to move on to metals. For that, I'm going to base coat everything in pig iron. And just base coat all the metals.
He's got some buttons on his jacket. I feel like he stole this from some admiral. This guy really wouldn't have this fancy of a coat. And I'm imagining some sort of... This guy's had a rough life. I'm imagining him as some sort of prisoner. So I'm going to make these cuffs around his wrists metal. Like they're some sort of shackle that he's he's broken out of prison or uh, jail. And he doesn't have the key to those. Maybe he's even got some shackles here, some manacles. He's about to get somebody in the same position he might have been once. And of course, one of my most favorite weapons in all of the Iron Kingdoms, the block and tackle. Like, what a great piece of weaponry to bonk somebody in the head with. So I want to make sure I want some yellow metals on this as well, but what I'm going to do is paint everything as white metal first. Sorry, I'm just getting the underside of the block and tackle. But what I'm going to do is after this has been shaded and highlighted, I'm going to go back with some yellow ink and pick out a couple of the white metals to turn yellow metal by just glazing. So we shaded the, or we base coated the pants in great coat gray. Now we're going to shade the metals in great coat gray. I'm going to do this by just making a wash. I don't need a lot of this right now. Drop of mixing medium for our transparency. We're just going to give this a nice go. With this, and we're just going to quickly wash our metals. The gray coat gray I like as a first shade on my metals because it kind of make it just it just makes it look more realistic. It's a nice shade, and then we're actually going to darken this up here in a moment. Get the buttons. Just kind of removes a lot of that shine to the metal. Yeah. Once again, that first shade kind of went all over the the metal to tone it down. And now this darker shade is just going to go in the recesses. And that way we're getting multiple tones across a uh, surface in a very quick manner. Finally, I'm going to highlight the metals. And for that, I'll be using cold steel. So I'll just take a bit of cold steel. Very simply, I'm just going to put this on the upper tips of our silver metals. just to make them pop out. Let's pay special attention to that screw head. And the hook, I want the hook to be nice and bright. Tops of his manacles and his wristbands. I feel like this guy needs a name. He's like starting to come alive for me here. And for the rope and his uh, strings across his, um, his uh, chest, I'm going to use the, basically the same colors. I'm going to start out with a, base, with a base coat of rucksack tan. And I'll just very quickly base coat those in rucksack. And I'll probably do two coats of this. I'm 
To shade a rope, I'm just gonna go back to our color that we shaded our boots with. So that brown ink bootstrap leather mix. We're just gonna pin that on there. Nice and smooth. Making sure it flows off the top a little bit. Now I'm gonna highlight the ropes with a bit of moldy ochre. We're just gonna to touch this along the top edge of the rope. Just a bit of moldy ochre. And just top on the top edge, like so, staying out of the recesses. Now I want the buttons on his coat to be gold. So we've already painted him silver and all they need is a little glaze of yellow ink. Take a bit of yellow ink. And just spot that over top. And I'll just turn those silvers into golds. And now I'm going to darkline the model. And all that is, is taking a dark color. And in this case, I'm going to mix a little Thamar Black into our boot shade. And I'm just going to put it in between all the different elements. So between the skin and the cloth, between the hair and the skin, um, between the metal and the rope, stuff like that. And I'm actually going to paint the uh, eyes with that too. And for, since this is tabletop, I'm not going to do complex eyes. I'm just going to kind of leave them dark. Right into that shade of brown ink, bootstrap leather. And we're just going to go around all the different elements, creating a dark line between them. This just helps everything stand out on the tabletop. And just generally anywhere between two, where two elements come together. And there you have it, a speed painted tabletop pirate ready to bash up some NPCs in the Surly Turtle. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to check out the links below. And until next time, remember, happy painting. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.